Hello guys and welcome to this video to understand about direct posterior restorations in the sense of how should we choose the best material for us, okay? And of course this decision should be based on the literature, so we need to know uh, what are the updated references and the updated information about this. So uh, before that I'd like to remind you guys uh, about the technique, so we need to choose a very good technique, but just to remind you guys that here in this case for myself for example I still have arrested caries and rests of endodontic materials here, right? So I need to remove that, otherwise the properties of, of my uh, composite material will not be the same, okay? And then uh, after this I can be able to do my final restoration, okay? So let's understand uh, about what the literature is saying and I'm not going to cover all the details of comparisons between resin and amalgam, okay? I'm just going to recommend this systematic review here for you guys to know the differences between resin and amalgam. I can let you guys know that the resins, they have improved a lot in regard to mechanical resistance and so forth. And now they have even comparable results to the amalgam by some articles, okay? So as shown by some articles, okay? Those are, would be basically the updated uh, aspects that we should consider uh, between, between the resin and amalgam, okay? But I never uh, used amalgam in my clinic, so I am going to focus on the comparison between the materials, uh, the composite resin materials that we have nowadays, and even GIC, okay? For that, I am recommending this literature review, okay? So this is a systematic review of the literature from a very high impact factor journal, okay? And this journal is called Dental Materials, and this article is, is actually pretty much updated. It's from uh, last year. Okay, so here in this article, they compared three different types of uh, resin materials, hybrid, micro uh, hybrid, nano hybrid. They even also included in this comparison the bulk fill resin as a separate category. Uh, and of course, the articles that they, they assessed here, they are also talking about GIC. Okay, so the three key points that were raised by this article, and I would like to bring them to you guys, is basically the first one, which is about the survival rate, okay? So basically, there was no significant differences uh, for the survival rate of the resin materials included in this article, right? So basically, the survival rate was 85 to 90% of restorations over 10 years of follow-up. Okay, so in 10 years, 85 uh, to 90% of the restorations were still okay, all right? And that's actually a very good result. For GIC, however, it was only 80% of survival rate in six years, okay, instead of 10 years, right? So the results are significantly worse and we need to consider these in our choice. Now, the reasons to replace are also a very important aspect and that's our, the second key point of today, okay? Basically, bulk fractures and recurrent carriers at the margins were the main factors for resins, whereas uh, retention loss, loss of context and even loss of the anatomic shape were factors for the GIC, okay? So, uh, uh, carriers, recurrent carriers at the margins of resin restorations were found in 20% of the cases, and of course, this, is, this includes all the articles raised by this literature review, okay? Now, uh, maybe one of you is asking, but how come they can uh, compare different articles? You know, maybe the restorations were not the same, maybe the cavities were not the same, but of course, this systematic re review is a very good, you know, uh, research from a very good journal, and uh, there is inclusion criteria, exclusion criteria, you know, so of course, it was, um, the methodology was very solid to include the correct uh, cases and the correct articles, of course, uh, to at least to draw uh, very nice and scientific based conclusions. And the third key point is of course our conclusion, which is that uh, based on the findings of all these articles that were raised by this literature review, composite resins, they, ha they actually had no difference uh, among themselves in regards to the, most of the clinical outcomes assessed, but they were, uh, in general, better, significantly better than GIC materials. Now, depends on the cost, depends on the clinical situation, but that's actually uh, the, you know, the most updated uh, aspects for us to take into consideration, to take this decision about which material should we use for direct posterior restorations. And of course, we, we should also choose the correct cases, right? Depending on the antagonist and on the remaining tooth structure, maybe we need a crown. We cannot do a direct 
compost restoration, of course, right? So take this into consideration as well, especially if you are a fresh dental clinician, okay? So if you guys liked this video, also please check our video about caries and about tooth wear and about occlusion, uh, how to adjust the principles of occlusion. They are also in our channel and I will put the link of, uh, of those videos here in the description below and try to find your answers in our channel because we are, we are actually trying to raise uh, the most important questions from my students and from the students that we have been talking to in order to offer better conditions for you guys to have uh, these questions solved, okay? So if you guys like this video, please hit the like button and see you guys in the next videos.